Getting to the bottom of a story, even if it means going straight to the top. Elias Makos, CJAD 800. Okie dokie, hour two of uh, the show. And, um, you know, if you've got a smartphone, uh, you're probably concerned with how much time you spend on it. Uh, whether, you know, you're on your iPhone or your Android phone and you're probably looking at your kids. And uh, you see your kids glued to their device uh, every day, all day after school. And you're just looking at your teenagers and saying, man, they're using the phone more than I am. And I think I'm using the phone too much. Well, uh, some news this week. Of course, um, Apple got some flack for removing, after a New York Times article, uh, where Apple was accused of, of removing apps from the App Store that allowed you to control screen time. Of course, Apple, re- in the, their last operating system update, added some features for you to do just that. So there were some calls that this is sort of getting rid of unfair competition. Uh, with more on this, Warren Wolanski joins me in studio. Warren, how are you? Good. How are you? Uh, just, uh, you're, I mean, what's your title of Plank? You're the founder of Plank? What founder. Is founder's a good title. Founder, right? Yeah. You like that better? Like, I'm happier with that than president. Yeah, you like to the founder, yeah. right? And w- when you walk around your office, do people have to call you the founder? They must call me the founder. Amazing. Well, Plank, uh, a digital agency in the city here, and a um, uh, creative agency, right? Yeah. I'm saying that correctly? Digital's good. Digital's good? Yep. That's what you got. Business card, boom. Yeah, Founder, like digital. Okay. Works for me. So what do you think about this? When you heard, when you, I mean, uh, we read the New York Times article that uh, Apple was pulling out some of the, pulling uh, off the App Store, these apps that let you control screen time. What were your initial thoughts? Well, I think my initial thought was, hey, you know, Apple has all this power and they're able to, to control their ecosystem so much. So my first thought was, mm-hmm. I should look into this. What's yeah. going on here? And then as I looked into it more and more, and I, you start to look at, at uh, Apple's recent uh, push towards privacy in the face of all the other you know major tech companies that are getting hit for it. So I kind of understood where they're coming from. Wait, so uh, so yeah. wait, why does it why does it go back to why does it relate to privacy? Uh, Apple had said uh, that that. Basically, all of these apps are getting system level access to people's email addresses and their mm-hmm. privacy settings, and they were able to then, um, if they had nefarious means, be able to actually control that, those parts of the of the operating system. Now, I, I, what I've heard as a counterpoint to that yep. is that these apps had been on the App Store for mm-hmm. years. Yep. For years. Yep. Like, and now. They finally, de- they finally decided. Oh well, now you're now what you're doing is wrong. When they've been there for years doing the exact same thing, right? So and, do, and do you believe their line that oh we just discovered it? I don't think it's an issue. They just discovered uh-huh. it. They changed their privacy policy, and then as a result, these apps now fell outside of the privacy policy. Of gotcha. course, it's an Apple's. You know, it's Apple has complete control over their ecosystem. So by changing their privacy policy, they can, uh, without without question, just remove uh, apps as they feel. You sort of uh, mentioned uh, how you know Apple's focusing uh, on privacy. Yeah. But you think they're? Why do you think they're doing it? Why do you think they're making it that focus? Are they trying to like sort of poke the bear with the other the, the Facebooks and the Googles and and companies that may not be doing that? Well, I think so for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, they're about selling iPhones, mm-hmm. and if they can make the if they can make the point that the iPhone is a more secure device than a Samsung phone mm-hmm. or any kind of Android phone, that's a business decision, no uh, question. Are um, f- from your perspective, and you know these these monitoring apps for screen time. I use it on mine. I sort of put. Uh, a, a, um, a time limit on social media apps on my phone. Okay. Uh, do you do that on yours? Do you have you put any limits on yours? I've been thinking about it. The truth is, I haven't because you know I, I love playing on the phone and, uh-huh. and and I should be limiting myself. But I guess being somebody who runs a digital agency, it's my job to be continuously playing with the phone. So uh, yeah. So how do you? I just want to know how you balance that because you know I that's what I say to myself. I lie to myself. Well, I, I own a uh, I own I I have a radio show. Yeah. And uh, because I have a radio show, I got to keep up to date with social media and what's going on. And that's the lie I tell myself in order to like uh, when I get when I reach the limit every day to click on ignore for today so I can have access to these apps still. I I guess I just ask myself the question at a certain point when I'm scrolling through who knows what. I'm kind Mm -hmm. of like... Is this more exciting than real life? And if I can, and, and if I can't answer that question, I turn off the app. How bad is it when it comes to you know? W- what do you know about just usage trends with these devices, and just how much people are using them? And do you have if you have any insight on demographics in, on those trends? Um, you know, the, I don't have specific yeah. insight on demographics, yeah. but if it comes down to it, people always talk about it as if they think millennials are the only ones using these phones. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you. You know, it's not. Right? It's not. It's, it's people everyone. in their 60s, people in their yeah. 50s. I mean, definitely everybody sits and plays with their phone. Yeah. And now when you come to when, when someone comes to you at, at your agency and wants to devise anything, uh, you know, a, a campaign or, or you know, obviously a website, stuff like that, um, 
it, it's no question it's entirely mobile first, right? Absolutely. I mean, we have not for probably going on a decade yeah. developed any website that wasn't mobile first. Uh-huh. Oh, for for a decade now. Oh, easily. And what do you th- and what is the split now when it comes to how actually people are using them? Um, as far as as far as a website, like de- desktop versus mobile. Desktop or, versus mobile. I would say it's almost always fifty fifty, if not skewing more towards mobile. I was I'm surprised it's just fifty fifty. I thought I would th- I thought I would think it'd be even higher. I think it depends on the actual website and uh-huh. who's using it, um, but it's very rare we'll see anything uh, below below fifty fifty. Okay, so what do you think um, Apple should do here? Should they um, open up their controls in a, you know, let's say their, their next uh, operating system. Do you think they should make it easier for third party apps to access this kind of stuff if it's all in the name of limiting screen time? Or do you think they have the, the right to just, you know, you want to limit your screen time, you got to use our own tools that we make into the a system operating system. I mean, it's very interesting. You see it all the time with any kind of uh, operating system. They're consistently always integrating technology. So in other words, I, it seems like the App Store in many ways is a place where people innovate. Yeah. Apple sees it. And they integrate it into their own operating system and kind of then say, well, you don't really need it because we've already just built it in for you. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> when you see that, like, do you say... Um, I always, I always wonder, and it also relates to the music industry. Right? Yeah. There's so many things like what, what is fair competition and what's not fair competition, right? You know, like how much access should Apple allow others onto their system? Like, for instance, you can't choose your browser on the on the iPhone, right? You, right. It's, it's you know, you got to use Safari. You can install other browsers, but the default system you can't change it. You're you know, and if you don't like Safari, let's say you want to use something else, you're basically stuck in a situation where you sort of have to use both, you know. And sometimes that happens with with mapping too, right? I can install Google Maps. You can install all of those different apps, but there's certain situations where boom, default takes you to Apple Maps and another thing. What do you think they they should be doing there? Look, I mean, they're all playing the same game. Whenever I go into Google News and I'm using the Google News Reader, uh-huh. I press on it, it automatically opens Chrome. It doesn't open Safari. Yeah, you know, so they're all playing the exact same game. It's an issue of power, and it's a question of do we think that these companies should be a, such monolithic um, organizations yeah. or should we try to encourage competition? And how much should they be doing to, to you know, is it, their, is it their job? Do they have a responsibility to limit screen time? I think, you know, because it can be the argument can be made that it's 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 it's, it's you know th- if they want to be a successful business and they want to make money, you want people on your smartphones as much as possible. Well, look, I mean, it's marketing. There's no yeah. question it is. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, they want people on their phones, but you know, they're reacting in in advance to the backlash in in media about people's addiction to their smartphones. Yeah. Uh, that's what this is all about. Warren Wolanski is the founder of. Plank, a uh, digital agency right here in uh, Montreal. Thanks for coming in, by the way. Yeah, thank you. You were in Toronto this weekend. Uh, I think you were, too. I was in Toronto this weekend. That was fun. We, we, we missed each other. I we know. both had the baseball games, it, too. It was wonderful. It was fun times. Yeah. Thanks, Warren, for uh, coming in. We'll see you real soon. All right.